Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Blue Dreams, where I try and help us all figure out how to be the light together. I've put out enough episodes that the analytics are starting to show up, and Anchor estimates that I have 26 listeners. So thank you for listening and supporting. I do greatly appreciate it. I hope you've all had a great week. I'm two weeks away from spring break, and I could not be more excited. I don't know who's more excited for spring break, me or the kids. (laughs) I struggled on which episode to record this week, and for some reason... How to be an ally was just really jumping out at me. So, let's get started. We are all allies. While the technical definition might mean a straight person who supports the LGBTQ community... We can all be allies, right? We should all strive to be allies, anyway. The number one thing to being an ally, though, is listening. I mean, really listen. Leave all your assumptions you may have heard about the subject at the door and listen to the person. Try and understand where they are coming from and be as supportive as you can without being too overbearing, if that makes any sense. Sometimes, one support may come across as kind of a fake nice or overtly happy. You didn't just receive a gay best friend. A friend was confident enough in your friendship to share something deeply personal with you. Now is not the time to make it about you. This is their moment. Let them have it. A lot of times, when a friend comes out to us, we may get really excited for them. And I love that. But we also need to remember that this is their news to share. And that we should never out someone or spread around someone's business unless they specifically say that they don't care if we talk about it with other people. Someone just confided in you probably their biggest, deepest secret. And now it's your job to support them in that journey without running your mouth. (laughs) Another step to being an ally is being open-minded. This could be completely surprising news for you, or you may have known this whole time and we're just waiting on them to tell you. And that's another thing about coming out, isn't it? You can't force someone out of the closet. They have to come to that realization on their own, that they want to be their true, authentic selves and not hide anymore. Sadly, and I'm sure we all know of a few people out there that are living secret lives. We can't judge them. You can't say, well, why don't you just come out? Some people literally can't. You don't know their situation, their circumstances. So it's never okay to judge a person's journey. But back to my point about being open-minded. It's more than accepting their way of life. It's really honestly trying to understand it, so that way you can communicate with others about their lifestyle. That may be the hard part to do, but the internet is an amazing option when needing to do some research. There are so many good scholarly sources out there that if you need to read up on what being gay or transgender or non-binary means, it's out there for you to research. In today's climate, with today's technology, ignorance really is no excuse. Being an ally can be easy when you're around other LGBTQ people. But what about when you're alone with straight friends and they bring up a horribly offensive gay joke or, and now it's 2021, and I would hope people don't say, that's so gay anymore. I would hope that you would stick up for your LGBTQ friends and be an ally even when nobody is watching. I do it all the time when people try to use the R word to try and call somebody stupid. 
It's as simple as saying, hey, we don't use that term anymore. It's offensive. And most of the time, that's all that needs to be said. You will have the occasional snowflake asshole who is too ignorant to think of another word to use in place of that one and try to argue. I usually hit him with, I'm sorry your vocabulary is so minute that you cannot think of a synonym for that word. That usually shuts him right up. Another part to being an ally is staying informed on new gender identities, <laughs> like we did last week, which I think I'm a better ally because of that, or staying informed on the latest legal news. Like in Alabama, there's a proposed legislation to require teachers to out trans students to their parents. And I'll be the first one to tell you that they can eat my shit on that bill because I would never out one of my students. Especially if I knew that it was going to cause them some type of harm. But sadly, old white men are more worried about which bathroom a person should use or legislating a person's uterus instead of fixing the real issues in this state, like poverty, infrastructure, and education, just to name a few off the top of my head. But back to staying informed. It's always okay to ask clarifying questions as long as you're not asking about somebody's genitalia because frankly unless you're in a relationship with that person or about to do the horizontal tango with that person it's none of your business asking about surgeries if they've had any if they're going to get any again is not really none of your business some people feel differently about that They don't mind talking about all the nips and tucks. But y'all, you can't ask a complete stranger those questions. It's just uncouth, as my grandmama would say. Being an ally also means including everyone. You can't be an ally just for the white gay boys. Sorry, not sorry. You have to be an ally for the entire community. You may not understand bisexuality, But it's a thing. And people can like guys and girls and do not need to, quote, pick a side. Now, that's older jargon. I've not really heard much of that lately. But bi erasure is a thing in the LGBTQ community. And maybe that's because people tend to come out in phases, which is perfectly fine. They may be bi and then realize that they are more gay than previously anticipated. Or someone might come out as gay and then realize that they are trans. Coming out in phases is okay. It's normal. I came out as a gay cis male, and now I'm a pansexual, non-binary bitch. (laughs) So coming out in phases is fine. If somebody has come out to you as gay, and now they're coming out to you again as trans, or coming out to you again as non-binary or something of the like, just go with it. Be accepting. Listen. Understand. Ask questions. It's okay. And finally, we welcome you to come out as an ally. Show your friends and family that you support the LGBTQ community and that you're here if anybody in the family needs an ally. Because you never know. A little cousin might come confide in you one day. Being out and open in your support is part of being that light that we're talking about. It's not enough to just be a quiet ally these days, especially when so many of our trans women of color are being taken from us too early and at an alarming rate. We have to be active in getting legislation passed to protect all groups of people. Did you know that 16 states do not have sexual orientation and gender identity covered in hate crime statutes. Alabama is one of those states. So there's still some work to do. Let's all be allies together. When we get back, some responses to my social media questions. I 
I asked on my social medias two different questions. The first question was, how can we be an ally? And some of these answers helped me touch on some things in my podcast, but I did want to highlight and reiterate just a few things. Listen. Actually listen. They want your ears and your understanding and they don't want your advice. Trust me, when somebody wants your advice, they will ask for it. Be supportive of everyone's individuality. It's okay for boys to wear skirts and nail polish. It's okay for girls to chop all their hair off. It's okay for people to put as many colors in their hair as they want to. Let people express themselves how they are comfortable doing it. Show that you care about the whole community and not just one subgroup. Educate yourself. Google is a powerful tool these days, but look for resources like PFLAG and GLAD. The conservative Christian Gazette won't have very accurate and affirming information. I'll just go ahead and put that out there for you. (laughs) I also asked, what is something someone said to you after you came out that was offensive? Because without meaning to, we can offend. And here are a couple of things. Quote, you just haven't found the right guy for you, end quote. And that was coming from a lesbian friend of mine. And you know, I was told the same thing, that I hadn't found the right girl yet. And that's so offensive, right? Another thing was always be manly. I've harped on it before, so I won't today. But toxic masculinity in this country is the reason men 25 to 45 are killing themselves every day. They were told not to talk about their feelings. They were told to dress a certain way, to act a certain way, to be the protector, right? All of these toxic traits are the downfall. So we need to get out of that mindset. Something else that was offensive that has definitely been said to me a million times was that I'm going to hell and the theology podcast is coming, but God loves the gays and you're literally following his commandments by loving your neighbor as yourself. Don't let dangerous theology get you down. Another one that was also said to me was, you're going to get AIDS and die. What they don't know is that anyone can get HIV and AIDS. And the medical technology for people living with HIV today is incredible. And I think I just had another episode idea. (laughs) another one that's offensive and I kind of have to agree with this one is quote we've always known we were just waiting for you to come out while this seems like there are good intentions behind it honestly some people don't want to hear it we all take time in discovering ourselves and it's okay that it took them a minute to figure it out and that you already knew it that's kind of like rubbing their face in it let's not do that Another one, quote, you deserve to die, which is still a very real fear for many members of our community. I've been threatened and called a fag so many times, been in a few fights for it, and had I not been able to defend myself, who knows how far those beatings would have gone. So death is still a real fear, which is why we need all allies to stand up and to be active and vocal and visible. It's not enough for just the LGBTQ community to be the light. We need our allies to be the light as well. All right, y'all. This episode may have been a little bit deeper than I anticipated, (laughs) but I hope we're all learning something together and that we can all help each other be better allies to our community. If you know an ally that needs some encouraging info, please feel free to forward them this podcast. I would love to help them learn how to be an ally. Next week, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to chat about. Maybe I'll get some more inspiration as we fly through the week. 
I hope you all have a great week. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Until next time, love you.